few people have asked me, where are the sermon notes? <laughs> this morning, I want you to focus primarily on God's word. We're starting our Christmas series, our Advent series today. Um, I'm calling this one Christmas According to Paul. The scripture I would like to read is Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, two verses. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Christmas is God sending forth his son. These two verses tell us when God sent his son. God sent him when the fullness of time came, meaning at the exact right time. Politically, Rome was in power. It was known as the Pax Romana, meaning the Roman peace. Greek was the common trade language of all the civilized people. It was a perfect time for the coming of Jesus Christ and the spread of the gospel message. Theologically, the Jewish religion had become ritualistic and legalistic. Judaism consisted of keeping laws and the rules of the elders. People tried to worship God and serve him, but they didn't have a correct view of God. They turned a relationship with God as father, and the Jewish people as their children into a religion. So God sent his son. In Galatians 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. And just as the father sets a time for his son to be out from under the guardian, so too God set the time for sending his son Jesus. And when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son. These verses also tell us how God sent his son. God sent him to be born of a woman. To be born of a woman. This woman's name is Mary of Nazareth. She was a virgin woman when the angel Gabriel gave her the news that she would give birth to God's son. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the angel Gabriel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, talking to Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Mary was going to bear God's son. Verse 4 also tells us as God sent him to be born under the law. To be born under the law, meaning Jesus was born a Jew. The Messiah was to be born into the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom God renamed Israel. He was going to be the son of David. Jesus came as a Jew. He was born under the law. And finally, and most importantly, these verses tell us why God sent his son. God sent him so that we might be redeemed. Look at the text carefully. It says that he might redeem those who were under the law. So the primary reference is to Israel, the Jewish people. We often forget that in America. We think it's all about us. No, we are really Gentiles. God sent his son primarily to redeem the people of Israel. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well in John 4, and he says, For salvation is from the Jews. In John 1, 11, it says he came to his own, meaning he came to the Jewish people. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. 
In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said to a Canaanite woman, a non-Jewish woman, who asked for mercy because her daughter was demon-possessed. And Jesus says to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He does eventually cast out that demon when that woman showed extraordinary faith. But the saying stands, Jesus came primarily for the Jewish people. Jesus only on a few occasions ever stepped foot outside of the nation of Israel. Jesus came to redeem the nation of Israel, but on the whole, they rejected him as their Messiah. And so Paul, the apostle, wrote in Romans 11, verse 11, by their transgression, by Israel's transgression, by Israel's rebellion, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Is that a praise the Lord? Because they rejected the Messiah, salvation has been coming now to the Gentiles. Gentiles can also be set free from sin. We can also be redeemed. I love what it says in Titus chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to just the Jews? No, to who? By the way, when it uses men, is it meaning only males? No. Men and women. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of, of the glory of our great God and Savior. Who's our great God and Savior? Christ Jesus. Who, here's the key verse, who gave himself for us. When Paul's writing to Titus, he's talking about the Gentiles and the Jews who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Isn't that great that we can be redeemed? We can become part of God's possession. Praise the Lord for this wonderful truth. Jesus provided redemption when he went to the cross, when he shed his blood, paying the penalty for sin, my sin and your sin. And through faith in Jesus, we have been redeemed. We have been liberated from slavery to sin. We have been set free. We have been bought with a price, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fanny Crosby wrote a hymn called Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child. And forever I am redeemed, redeemed. God not only sent his son to redeem us, but he also sent him that we might be adopted. Look at verse 5 again. So that he might redeem those who are under the law. And again, the purpose clause. So that we might receive the adoption as sons. And once again, this adoption is not specific to males. It refers to sons and daughters. In 2 Corinthians 6, 18, Paul quotes the Lord God saying, I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. When it talks about sons of God, it really refers to meaning sons and daughters. And how does one get adopted into God's family? Well, back in Galatians 3, 26, just a few verses ahead of this, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith. In Christ Jesus. How do you become a son or daughter of God? It's through faith in who? The one who went to the cross, shed his blood to pay for your sins. God sent his son that we might be adopted. Christmas is God sending his son to redeem us and adopt us as his child. Lee Strobel wrote a bunch of books. In one of his books, The Case for Faith, he tells this story, and I'd like to read you this story about adoption. Lee Strobel says, Today I want to talk to you about the Jesus I know, the Jesus I've known for 18 years. At the time that he wrote this, he knew the Lord for 18 years. 
who changed my life. I want not only to provi provide you the information about Jesus, I want to help you experience Jesus today. If I had a friend investigating Christianity, if he wanted to know about Jesus, and we were at Starbucks one day, and he said to me, Lee, you've been a Christian for 18 years now. Who is this Jesus? What would I say to my friend? I would tell my friend this story of who Jesus is. This story is kind of sad. It took place in Korea shortly after the Korean War. A Korean woman had an affair with an American soldier and she got pregnant. He went back to the United States and she never saw him again. She gave birth to a little girl and this little girl looked different from all the other Korean children. She had light-colored, curly hair. In that culture, children of mixed race were ostracized by the community. In fact, many women would often kill their children because they didn't want them to face such rejection. But this woman didn't do that. She tried to raise her little girl as best she could. For seven years, she tried to do that until the rejection was too much. She did something that probably nobody in this room could imagine ever doing. She abandoned her little girl to the streets. This little girl was ruthlessly taunted by people. They called her the ugliest word in the Korean language, tuki, meaning alien devil. It didn't take long for this little girl to draw conclusions about herself based on the way people treated her. For two years, she lived in the streets until finally she made her way to an orphanage. One day, word came that a couple from Amer America was going to adopt a little boy. All the children in the orphanage got excited because at least one little boy was going to have hope. He was going to have a family. So this little girl spent the day cleaning the little boys, giving them baths and combing their hair and wondering which one would be adopted by the American couple. The next day, the couple came, and this is what the girl recalled, her own words. It was like Goliath had come to life. I saw the man with his huge hands lift up each and every baby. I knew he loved every one of them as if they were his own. I saw tears running down his face, and I knew if they could, they would have taken the whole lot of them home with them. He saw me out of the corner of his eye. Now listen to the description that she gave of herself. She says, now let me tell you, I was nine years, years old, but I didn't even weigh 50 pounds. I was scrawny thing. I had worms in my body. I had lice in my hair. I had boils all over me. I was full of scars. I was not a pretty sight. But the man came over to me and he began rattling away something in English until I looked up at him. Then he took his huge hand and laid it on my face. What was he saying? He was saying, I want this child. This is the child for me. When I heard, this is Lee speaking, when I heard this woman tell the story, my mind froze on that scene because that's like the Jesus I know. That is what Jesus would do because Jesus peers beneath the ugliness of our sin and the scars of our failure and looks all the way down to a soul that's made in the image of God Almighty. Jesus wants to take your face in his strong but gentle hands, and he wants to cup your face and look into your eyes. He wants to say to you, I want this child. This is the child for me. I've waited since the foundation of the worlds were laid for this moment to cup this face, to look in these eyes and say, I want to adopt you. That's the first thing I'd want my friend to know about Jesus. If you're like me, you come to church and see people who maybe have been Christians for a long, long time, and they seem to have their act together. You know the truth about yourself. They don't know what's going on inside of you. They don't know the secret sins. They don't know the secret fantasies you've had. If they knew the real you, you fear they would reject you every bit as much as that little girl was rejected in Korea. But the amazing thing about Jesus Christ is that Jesus doesn't see you that way. Jesus knows everything already. He's aware of all the secret sins in your life. And knowing all of this, even still, he wants to reach out and cup your face in his hands and say, I want this child. Then something shocking happened with that little nine-year-old girl. As that man reached out to her and 
She said, later, the hand on my face felt so good, and inside I said, oh, keep that up. Don't let your hand go. But nobody had ever shown that kind of affection for me before. I didn't know how to respond, so I yanked his hand off my face. I looked up at him and spit on him. I turned away and ran away. Can you imagine? Her window of opportunity is open. Here is hope. What does she do? She spits in his face. When she said that about herself, I thought, how is this possible? Then I stopped. I said, wait a minute. I've done the same thing with God, and you probably have too. Have you ever turned your back on Jesus? Let me tell you something amazing about the Jesus I know. He is a lot like that American couple at the orphanage because they returned the next day. They understood the suffering she'd gone through, the trauma that she had experienced. And despite her initial rejection of them, they went back to the little girl with lice in her hair and boils all over her body, they said, we've got to have this child. This is the one we want to adopt. And they did. They named her Stephanie, and they got her the medical attention she needed. They loved that child just like their own. She grew up and became a follower of Jesus Christ. She got married, and she now has children. She lives here in the United States. So I would say to my friend who asked me about Jesus, if you ever turned your back on him, if you've ever let that window of opportunity close, God has not given up on you. If you're asking me about the Jesus, if you're asking about Jesus because something inside of you is stirring, the Spirit of God is starting to do something in you and draw you toward him, don't let that window of opportunity shut. Pursue God because he's already pursuing you. The danger is not on his side of the equation. He will be there for you. That's what I'd tell my friend about Jesus I know. He wants to adopt you because he loves you. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Aren't those great verses? Christmas is about God's love for us. He sent his son Jesus to this world for the purpose of going to a cross, to suffer, bleed, and die to pay for your sin. And you can be adopted into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ. I would like those who are going to serve the communion to get ready at this time to serve the elements. The communion elements are packaged in two different cups in one slot. The first cup has bread. The second cup has the juice. We ask that you would take both when they're being passed. The communion table is open to all who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. If you haven't placed your faith and trust in Jesus, you can do it right now. By simply praying a prayer in your mind to the Lord God, he hears what goes on in your mind, and you can pray, Lord Jesus, I admit to you I'm a sinner. And today I believe that, Jesus, you died on the cross to pay for my sin. And today I confess you as my Savior and Lord. I want to be adopted into your family. If you pray that prayer right now, you became a child of God. And you can partake of this Lord's table that the Lord gave to his disciples before he went to the cross. The table is open to all who have placed their faith in Jesus. And so as the communion elements are being passed out, please take a moment to pray. Pray about what? How about thanking him that he sent Jesus to redeem us, to buy us? You've been bought with a price. The precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank the Lord for redeeming us. And thank the Lord for adopting us as his children. So I'm going to ask them to come now and pass out the 
the Lord's table. Please hold on to the elements until I have another scripture reading and a prayer, and then we'll partake together. Matthew records the Lord's Supper in the upper room on the Passover. And it says in Matthew 26, verse 26, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. So let's take eat. When he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. The juice represents the blood of the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of it. Would you join me in prayer, Lord? We thank you for your great love for us. A love so great that you sent your son who came to this earth for one purpose, not to be worshipped as a little baby in a manger, but to be worshipped as our Savior who died on a cross to pay for our sins. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing yourself to go to a cross, to be beaten, to bleed, to die, to pay for our sin. And Father God, we thank you so much that you did not leave him dead, but you raised him from the dead, and he lives forevermore. He lives in a side of us when we place our faith in him as Savior and Lord. So, Lord, we come before you as your people saying thanks. Thank you for the cross. 
pray this in Jesus, your name, Savior's name, our Savior's name.